The Mississippi Sea Wolves are in the northeastern region for the fourth time of the season, as tonight they play the opener of a two-game series against the Delaware Thunder. Good evening and welcome into the Sea Wolves Broadcast Network. Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play from the Sea Wolves front office in D'Iberville. This game coming your way from Center Ice Arena in Harrington, Delaware. So the Sea Wolves are coming off of a very impressive weekend at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Most recently, it was a 5-4 win against the Danbury Hattricks at the Coliseum. It was 1-1 after the first period, 3-2 after the second, and then 5-4 again, your final score of the night. It was the Seawolves' first series sweep of the season. And the Seawolves scores on Saturday, Jake Raleigh, he scored the first of the night. And then after that, it was just a nonstop connection between Yaroslav Yevdokimov and Yanni Lirakos. You have to come off three goals, one assist for a four-point night for Liarakos. Even more so, five points, one goal, and four assists. And it seemed like those two were just feeding each other the puck all night long en route to that 5-4 to four win against Danbury, a team that was second place in the Empire Division. Another worthy player to point out for Mississippi, Kyle Russell, who found a pair of assists in his Seawolves debut, earning him the third star of the game. Goaltender Blake Wyrick earned a second consecutive win with a total of 39 saves. And as for the Thunder, last Saturday they had a 4-3 overtime loss at the hands of the Elmira Mammoth. Delaware goals were scored by Rasmus Asp, Danila Malushkin, and Eric Melso, a former Seawolf. It was a game that saw 86 combined penalty minutes, so things getting heated all the way into OT. And despite the loss, the Thunder put 49 shots onto Elmira netminder Richard Shipman. So as a result of last weekend's events, Seawolves come into tonight with a record of 5-21-3, ranking 5th in the Continental Division. They'll go against a number 5 team in the Empire, this Delaware Thunder team, uh, looking for their second win of the season. And again, this game taking place in Delaware, so the Seawolves with a great travel Getting ready for a pair of games in the Northeast, you have tonight a 6.30 Central Time puck drop, and then tomorrow we have a 6 o'clock start for that series finale. Again, we are counting down the time until we get ready for some Friday night hockey. We'll take a break and take you through some of the other games going around the Federal Prospects Hockey League. That coming your way on the pregame show, this is the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. We welcome you back into the pregame show where you have a good look at Center Ice Arena in Harrington, Delaware, the site of tonight's game between the Mississippi Sea Wolves and the Delaware Thunder. Very quickly, let's take you through the out of town scoreboard in the FPHL tonight. We have a good one on tap at 7.30 Eastern. It's the Carolina Thunderbirds paying a visit to the Columbus River Dragons. You recall last week those teams met up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where the Thunderbirds were able to have a two-game series sweep, but they did it in quite convincing fashion. Final scores of 8-2 and then 7-2. So the River Dragons will have an opportunity of redemption tonight and on home ground 
nonetheless. Taking a look at some of the other games going on throughout the league, the Watertown Wolves hitting the road against the Danbury Hattricks for a 7.30 Eastern start. And then last but not least, other than this game tonight in Delaware, it's the Elmira Mammoth paying host to the Binghamton Black Bears, also 7.35 Eastern. So all of the games across the league have the same start time, so it's going to be pretty easy to track things as we go through the evening and into the intermission report. We see the Thunder starting lineup currently taking the ice as we are just moments away from the start of tonight's action. Fans rising to their feet for the National Anthem, so we'll step aside and come back with the opening puck drop and the play-by-play -play of the action. That coming up next, you're tuned in to Seawolves Hockey. The National Anthem has concluded in Delaware as we get ready for some Friday night hockey. Seawolves ready for the front half of a weekend slate against the Delaware Thunder. As we get ready for puck drop, let's take you through the goaltender matchup this evening. We begin on the Thunder side of things. And for them, getting the nod is Trevor Martin. 22 games this season. He's combined for a 118-2 record, a 538 goals against average, and an 873 save percentage. And for the Seawolves, as of right now, we understand it'll be Blake Wyrick with his third consecutive start. With a total of 19 games, it's a record of 2-8-2 for Wyrick, a 561 goals against average, and an 840 save percentage. Players taking their spots out at the neutral zone. Seawolf skating from left to right, and we're underway for another Northeastern series. The first touch is won by Yanni Liarakos as he peppers a shot on, and it's ricocheted out of play by Trevor Martin for your first whistle of the night. Seawolves, as usual, on the road going in the white threads with the blue trim on the shoulders, blue numbers and lettering on the back, red pants, white socks, and white helmets. It's another face-off win and a quick chance by Liarakos once more. Martin able to shoulder it down into the near corner. At the right circle, Delaware breaking free in front of the penalty box wall. It's Corgan running it back upstairs. Now a one-touch by Eric Ogenezov. At the hash marks, it's a four-man jam. Now a sparked up left wing point. This skitters on by Dimitri Daniluk. And that's Blake Wyrick sticking out the left pad. It's spread around the end wall to the left wing. Everyone coming together again. 
a Thunder player taking a tough hit down low, and the Seawolves will send it high out across center. It's a low-lying arena in Delaware, so perhaps you don't have as much leniency when it comes to those high send-ups by players. And the Seawolves have another chance here as it's rattled around the back wall. At the left point, it's Ethan Bush Anderson, and he backs out to the middle. Playing ahead, it's Wilson. He goes down over a stick, and the Seawolves are back from square one. At the goal line, this flows out through center ice. It hit a couple of sticks on the way down, but eventually it's Trevor Martin around the back wall. Saved at the right point, Marvin Powell with a shot. That gets ricocheted through traffic. And here again is Ethan Bush Anderson. Looking across the zone to Michael Haskins, and he plays it upstairs to Powell. Powell has it going between the skates. Matt Carancy to the rescue as he'll backhand it behind Martin's cage. It's the Thunder going one end to the other. A little foot race run there by Jake Raleigh. Now it's Bush Anderson tape to tape with Powell. Powell at his own blue line goes to the center red. Some more congestion out in front there. A nice little block from Jacob Wolf. Wolf handling out in front of the Thunder bench off to the right side of the broadcast position. He connects with Brendan O'Reilly. Riley lobs it off of the back glass. Just underway in this game, 17.45 to go in the first. No score between the Seawolves and the Thunder. So it's the Seawolves regathering once again. Jake Raleigh at the center logo. Darts it into the right circle. Joseph Brennan on the receiving end for Delaware, not able to clear it. Right wing circle for Leo Rakos, backhand shot, redirected by Trevor Martin, and his defenders are able to clear the crease. Dumped down the four boards behind Blake Wyrick. Just underneath the goal line, three men going at it, and it's sparked over for Daniluk. Dimitri Daniluk reversing to the center line. Back in, a little two-on-two, two, broken free backhand shot. It can not be capitalized on there by Yaroslav Yevdikimov. And again, as we mentioned during the pregame show, Yevdikimov just lights out this past Saturday a four-point appearance and almost had the first one of the night right there. But now it's the Thunder with numbers coming in on Wyrick. A slap shot from the tight angle gets sticked away. Now at the red dot. This is Yevdikimov slowing down. Mississippi in the midst of a line change. Goes rink wide again. 16-25 on the board in period number one. Seawolves and Thunder in some back and forth action. Mississippi gains entry in on Trevor Martin. And he'll handle it off at the end boards. Now tapped off the glass in front of the penalty box. Couple of men getting sorted out. We see Jeff Epright out there for the first time of the evening. Into the right circle. Michael Haskins taking a 360. Haskins with an errant pass. One end to the other. And we have an icing called against the Seawolves. Again, we thank you for tuning in wherever you may be. Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play on the Seawolves broadcast network. We'll have a face-off back in towards the right of Wyrick. Again, playing his third consecutive game. And Eric Melso leaning in on the draw for the Thunder, a former Seawolf member who had a number of games with the team just last month. Looks like we're going to redo the draw. It's Matt Carancy in there for the Seawolves, and Mississippi is victorious. Jeff Epright from the far half wall flies this high and into the mesh netting. And since it's a smaller location at the center ice arena, you have that netting which wraps around the entirety of the seating area. So we'll redo the face-off to our left. This Thunder team, coached by Lou Santini, he has decades of coaching experience dating back to 1990 with Iona College in New York. So the next draw directed over to the right wing of the Thunder attacking end. We see the lines continue to get worked out a bit on the Delaware side of things. We're ready to get back at it. We see Chris Corgan returning to the rink.
So the first touch comes up at the right point for Oganezov, and right away Blake Wyrick vacuums it to the equipment. We played 418 of regulation here tonight in Harrington, the Seawolves' first visit to Delaware. They'll play tomorrow night at the Center Ice Arena, and then they won't come back up to this specific location again. They have that upcoming trip in a couple of weeks to Danbury, Connecticut. But other than that, they have played the majority of their northeastern dates. So it's the Seawolves. Starting up again from behind Wyrick, a feeder comes out through center ice intended to Marvin Powell. Oganezov able to beat him to the punch. Now it's a side swipe to Austin Weber. Weber with a couple of bodies to beat out to the blue line. And it's swept across for the Seawolves' Michael Haskins. Haskins pushes it to the left of Oganezov. And now it's Delaware on the counter. Austin Weber spinning in front of the Thunder bench. He's onside to the left wing, and he lasers it off of the back glass. Up at the point, a thunderous hit there put on to Mason Cerrone, and he's quickly back up to his feet. Mason Cerrone has proven himself to be quite the physical player, had a couple of scuffles this past week against the Danbury Hattricks. Again, the Seawolves. Coming off a pair of wins against a number two team. Make that the number one team in the Empire Division. I beg your pardon as we have a strike from the high slot. That's over Wyrick's head. So again, that just makes it even more impressive. That number one team in the Empire, the Danbury Hattricks. And altogether, it's a very competitive Empire. We see the Binghamton Black Bears looking very good out of there as well. As it's lobbed out through center. To the back for Trevor Martin. Turned away at the left circle. It's another errant attempt. In between the benches. It's flung over right circle for Houston Wilson. Wilson skitters it across. Shot got fanned on by J.C. Mortz. Now he's doubled up between a pair of Seawolves. 13.53 remaining in your first period. Still no goals between the Seawolves and the Thunder. It's Learakos. Pinballing one out through center, and he's accompanied by Jake Raleigh. Learakos kicks it off at the left blade, and he is engulfed by three different Thunder players. Danila Malushkin making a run for it down on the left corner. The right hand of the referee comes up, and we have your first penalty of the game. This is holding, but let's take a look at which side it goes against. We see Bush Anderson talking to an official, but again, we're going to be patient and see who exactly it goes against. We see Trevor Finch out there for the Seawolves, donning number 81 on his back. And normally this is the time we would go into that first media timeout of the evening, but we still see some players milling around in that Seawolves zone. Now Wyrick taking off to the bench. So we'll take a 30-second breather and come back with more action. 13.26 to go in the first. This is the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Seawolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. Back to play in Harrington as we're poised for a right circle draw. We see four men out there for the Seawolves, so it'll be the first power play of the game for Delaware. And the Thunder coming into the night with a power play rate of 18.7%, ranking right in the middle of the Federal Prospects Hockey League at number five. They were two for seven on the power play this past Saturday against Elmira as the Seawolves are able to get a quick dump out to the neutral zone. Now approaching that seven-minute mark into your first period. 
and the Sea Wolves and Thunder still had a scoreless deadlock. Strung up to the right point by Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk skating over on top of the right circle. Now a shot in on Wyrick, and he takes it off that outer side of the left hand. Now picked off to the far side post, and it's rolled over to Houston Wilson. Wilson taking a shove from Lucas Helen. Wilson going down as a result. Thunder able to keep it across. A buck 18 to go on the penalty, which did, after all, go to Ethan Bush Anderson on a holding call. Thunder keep it across over on the far post. Down at the goal line, a point blanker there. Shimmied away by Blake Wyrick. And the Seawolves still trying to clear it. Houston Wilson on the left hash. Into the low slot and running out of room there was Rasmus Asp. Blake Wyrick trapping the puck underneath the right skate. 12.22 left in this first period. And 56 seconds from now, the Seawolves will go back to full strength. Ethan Bush Anderson in the bin. Well, the good news, no transactions to speak of for the Seawolves. Same goes for the Thunder as of right now. So you'll see a bit of consistency dating back to last weekend's series. Of course, against Dan Barry, shot over on the far boards. And it ricochets over for the Thunder's Austin Weber. Weber at the blue line. 43 seconds left on this Delaware power play. A little duel off the back wall, spread upstairs. And again, you see the Thunder really favoring that far side of the zone. Now down at the right corner, you have a two-man scramble. And still, Jake Raleigh unable to supply the relief for the Seawolves. 21 seconds left on the Bush Anderson penalty. 11.43 to go in the first. Now it's a two-on-two two for Jake. Raleigh drops it back, and they score! Yanni Lirakos, an absolute bullet underneath the crossbar. A power play. Make that a shorthanded goal. Makes it one to nothing for the Seawolves. And we've seen that before, that penalty kill. Just oh so lethal. Jake Raleigh in there nonetheless. Three shorthanded goals this season for Raleigh. And he set up that play with a drop pass to Lirakos right older, over the shoulder of Trevor Martin with about 11 minutes to go in the first. So on the ensuing faceoff, we have the Seawolves back at the blue line and rallied around the penalty box wall. Hands come up from the referee, and this appears to be offside against Delaware, looking for that quick response after the Liaraco goal. So we know that Jake Raleigh, of course, had the assist coming off of the play, but waiting for that official credit on the score sheet. And that's exactly how it's going to play out alongside Kyle Russell, getting the secondary helper, now his third assist, and two games with the Seawolves. So it's rifled to the right point. All the way back to the tight angle of Trevor Martin. They'll wrestle it around the end wall. A little tight play from Yevdikimov. Yaroslav Yevdikimov trying to push it back across. Delayed offside against the Seawolves. So the Thunder end up with control anyways. It's one-handed to Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk goes circle to circle, and it's floored all the way down into the Seawolves' right corner. Wyrick with the paddling motion. Over on the half wall, this is Lucas Helen. Helen back up front. Michael Haskins, the first one there. And so you have Dikimov waiting behind Blake Wyrick. Again, a one to nothing score. Seawolves with the advantage after the shorthanded goal from Yanni Liarakos. So good to see Russell with another assist, the youngster in the lineup. Off to an impressive start in his early professional career. Carancy worked down to an E as he was trying to cross the Thunder Blue line. And it's reversed by Ollie Venstrom. Venstrom, short side to Malushkin. And Malushkin plays it deep. Just around that halfway mark of the first period. 
And we've got a one to nothing Seawolves advantage. Now Epright contested by Weber at the penalty box wall. And it's Weber able to get the better of him. A little corner shot there finds itself to Joseph Brennan. Brennan at the blue line. Drops the anchor to Malushkin. A little too close for comfort there on Blake Weirich, so he puts the glove hand on top. And it should take you into the next media timeout. But it's Yanni Lirakos, officially his second goal in a Seawolves uniform to draw first blood on this Friday night. More coming up after this from Harrington, Delaware. Hockey is back. The Mississippi Seawolves are ready to pounce at the Coliseum. Great seats still remain, starting as low as $10. It's the comeback of the pack. You won't want to miss it when Coach Joe Pace and the Seawolves take to the ice. Call 228-594-3700 or visit MississippiSeawolves.com for single game tickets. We are halfway through this opening period, about nine and a half minutes to go. Seawolves up one to nothing, but as we resume play, we had a penalty just before the break. Joe Pace Jr., two minutes for a cross-checking minor. So the Seawolves are off to their second PK of the night, but the first time they were shorthanded, they were able to find a goal by Yanni Lirakos. So let's see if they have a little more fortune while playing down a man. Face-off coming to the left of Wyrick. And the Seawolves able to get the win there, courtesy of Michael Haskins. He'll spark it over to the near corner. And jostled free by Ollie Venstrom. Again, it's Jake Raleigh, who has just been a wizard when it comes to the penalty kill offense. This time he gets surrounded by three Thunder players. And it's Danila Malushkin trying to go zone to zone. He peels away at the right corner. Now over at the far point for Daniluk. Daniluk, wide side. It's Malushkin added again, playing catch back and forth with Daniluk. He switches across. 118 to go on the power play for the Thunder. And a great glove save from Blake Wyrick. Looks like a nice crowd in Delaware tonight. They seat about 700 people at Center Ice Arena. And uh, you'll hear from players when it comes to those smaller facilities, they know how to pack the house. And it can be quite the environment to play in. Very electric indeed. A kick save by Wyrick sends the puck out of play. We're giving you the play-by-play -play of the action remotely from the Seawolves front office in D'Iberville. So, you have a little bit of warmer weather. and. What we see is what you see. 8.36 to go in this first period. Seawolves up by one. The loose puck dusted off. It's Ollie Venstrom. Everyone getting to work down in the corner. Joe Pace with one minute to go. On his time in the box, a cross-checking minor just before our recent break. It's Daniluk with some open room, but he'll feed it back across. Now it's Daniluk. In between the rings, left wing side, and the shot misses from Houston Wilson. But that one had some heat behind it for sure as it's Venstrom. Back upstairs, pickpocketed away. That's Jake Raleigh flipping it up but not out. Now it's Wilson trying to rim it behind Blake Wyrick, and we'll go one end to the other. Now it's Trevor Martin's turn. He'll paddle up for Houston Wilson. And he'll cycle it to the left circle. Jake Rowley able to post him up. 
It's the Seawolves trying for another chance here, still down a man as a result of the Joe Pace infraction. Michael Haskins rolling it to Leo Rakos. And we are back to five on five, so that makes the Thunder 0 for 2 on the power play this evening. Leo Rakos trying for a second of the evening. Makes way, backhander, and they score! Three men running in there for the Sea Wolves. It goes forehand, backhand, pass Martin. And Mississippi has doubled the lead, two to nothing. So as we look at that parade going back to the Seawolves bench, it looks like that's Yaroslav Yevdokimov. Who would have figured? Again, four points in the most recent game last Saturday against Danbury. And now we can only assume he'll pick up that goal. Lirakos with the first one. Now we go to Yevdokimov. So Yevdokimov with assist from Jake Raleigh and Ethan Bush Anderson. That makes Raleigh on a two-point evening with a pair of helpers. Slow roller coming in on Blake Wyrick, but he's unable to secure it. Brendan O'Reilly down off of the corner boards. Rubbing shoulders a bit there with Russell. A quick strike in on Blake Wyrick, and he smothers it. Now we have some festivities in the low slot. Lucas Helland. Dipping out of that, you have a couple of men trying to go at one another. We'll see if we can get some jersey numbers out of this. We see Brendan O'Reilly for the Thunder refusing to disengage. Cerrone out there alongside Powell scoping out what's going on. But Connor Lind was one of the main perpetrators there. And then that other one for the Thunder, Brendan O'Reilly. So we see him going into the box. We'll wait and see if that's more of the same for Lind. First half of the opening period went by innocently enough. We see some frustration for the Thunder there, trying to get something going after a slow start. As we recap the happenings of this opening period, again, it was Yanni Lirakos. At the 8.22 mark, he had that short-handed goal. And then it was Yevdokimov, even strength, at 12.49. Joe Pace talking things out with one of the officials. Again, it was Connor Linden there. Going at it in a crowd of players. So a bit of a breather for the respective sides. Also getting down to that final media timeout of the opening first period, so it's possible this might also play a factor in there. Regardless, we'll step out in Harrington, Delaware. Your score, the Seawolves 2 and the Delaware Thunder 0. We'll have four on four getting back to play. Again, it's Connor Lind in the box for the Sea Wolves and Brendan O'Reilly just off to his right side after a little altercation they had coming off of the break. Now it's a Sea Wolves two on one, flipped across, and the shot just goes shy. But it was Yevdokimov starting things up there alongside Lirakos, that deadly line that we really saw come into fruition. Just this past weekend, Thunder able to leave that time unscathed. And it's skated in by Chris Corgan of Delaware. Drops it back to Joseph Brennan. Goes across, a buck 22 to go until these teams return to full strength. It's swept up at the high slot. Seawolves with numbers. You have Dikimov on the near side boards, and Mississippi is called offside. So the 
Official calls, according to the score sheet, Lind and O'Reilly unsportsmanlike conducts alongside roughing minors. So they get both of those. Connor Lind with his penalty served by Jesse Michelle. And for Delaware, O'Reilly has his infraction served by Justin Movali. So Delaware zips one in. Blake Wyrick takes it to the left-hand glove. We saw Jesse Michelle during warm-ups catching up a bit with Eric Melso, the former Seawolf this past month. And we know Jesse Michelle, one of those players that likes to skate up and down the red line during the warm-ups, maybe stir the pot a bit. But I think that was just a matter of him, you know, talking to an old friend perhaps. You never know. A little point shot goes to Blake Wyrick, and he'll play it perfectly again for another whistle. 543 remaining in the first period. And the Seawolves lead two to zip. Floated out through center ice, and it's Jake Raleigh with a good look here. Left hash, he scores! Jake Raleigh make it point number three tonight. Two assists, and now one goal for number 22, and it's three to nothing, Seawolves. And he had two defenders staring him right in the face there. He pulled into the slot and put that shot right on the money. And it's great to see the Seawolves picking up that success that they left off with this past weekend with those two wins against the number one Empire Division team, the Danbury Hattricks. And we get right back at it with Michael Haskins. It's dished away. Now an odd man rush for the Thunder. Right circle back out in front. Oh my goodness. Blake Wyrick somehow breaking down to the split position and keeping that one out. But Danila Malushkin looked like he had a straightaway path to the back of the net. And somehow Wyrick keeping Delaware off of the board for now. And they'll make another run for it. It's Malushkin with attempt number two wrestled down from behind by Bush Anderson. And on we go with play. It's Delaware through center ice, bristled to the point. Malushkin on side at the far side post. A backhander pops off of the glass. And a cover up from Wyrick. Now one second remaining until we get back to full strength off of those penalties between Lind and O'Reilly. You see Wyrick taking a break with the water bottle, much needed. Shutting down Malushkin and keeping the Seawolves up by three will round out this opening period after this break. Four forty-six until the opening period is all said and done from Harrington, Delaware. The Seawolves lead three to nothing over the Delaware Thunder, and the players gather over there on the far boards of the Seawolves ice. They skate from left to right. You see Chris Corgan in there, a little tie up, a stick breaking in two, and we have a fight at center ice. That's Justin Movali in there for the Thunder. Down on top of a Seawolves player, and uh, the officials took him a couple of seconds to get to the scene, but 
things starting to subside as of right now. Again, that coming right off of the draw. And you saw some players freezing immediately. That's Jesse Michelle. Michelle and Movali, again, were serving those penalties for two different guys. It was Connor Lynn for the Sea Wolves, and then for the Thunder, you had O'Reilly. So those two guys were just serving the penalties. I guess while they were in the box, they came to that mutual agreement, let's drop them. And they did exactly that. They're going right back into the bin. You see Jesse Michelle giving a little bit of credit there to his opponent, Justin Movali. You know, Jesse Michelle always looking for a tilt, and he can sit there and recap every single one uh, that he's had so far this season with the Seawolves. It stays fresh in his memory, and before every game, he's thinking about the potential matchups, you know, who he could be mixing it up with next. And this time, it ended up being Movali. So they'll have five more minutes in the box. Perhaps a little more time to discuss amongst themselves. Blake Wyrick with the draw coming to the left. Seawolves up 3 to nothing, And momentarily as they get things figured out on the ice, we will go through the scores of tonight's game so far. 8-22, Yanni Lirakos. Yaroslav Yev, the Kimov there at 12.49. Jake Raleigh at 14.26. And we have a loose puck coming back into the Thunder zone. Left circle picked off. Back out in front. They score! Well, they set it up just like that towards the crease of Martin. Trying to take a look at who got that final blast. It looks like that's Marvin Powell. And you can make it a 4-0 Seawolves lead. Four thirty-one showing on the board here in the first. So look at the Seawolves just spreading around these goals. Four strikes between four different players. And they have been absolutely rolling tonight in Harrington. Now we see a Thunder player taking a puck up top. He's shaken up and play will finish out as a result. Trying to get a look of who that was, but it was a puck which came back on that Thunder player and showing a lot of pain immediately. Well, that man slowly coming back up to his feet. Let's try and take a look at who that is. It's Eric Oganezov. He returns to the bench where he's going to be examined by the trainer. So we definitely hope the best for him as his faceoff comes to the far side dot. Seawolves looking into the attacking zone. We'll come over to the far wall. A couple of men moving early and it pops back out to the Seawolves ice. And uh, the official decided to blow the whistle. Let's do it again. So the clock starts up once more, and it's Venstrom rolling it into the right circle behind the net to Ethan Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson along the hash marks. It's Brennan flipping it up. Brennan wins it right back, and he hacks it off at the end wall of Blake Wyrick. Now through center, it's Raleigh. One goal and two assists tonight. Leah Rakos pulls the string, and it's kicked out by a Seawolf skate. That being from Yaroslav Yevdikimov. Laid into the zone by the Thunder. 3.42 until the buzzer to wrap up the first. And the Seawolves have a 4 to nothing lead. A shot cranked on. Wyrick paddles it to Dmitry Daniluk. Now it's Daniluk switching sides behind the net. Return pass to Daniluk. He looks and fires in the traffic. Houston Wilson attempting for the follow-up, but no can do as Lirakos frees it up at the enemy blue line. You have Dikimov called offside. So the final minutes of the first stanza slowly creeping across. 
And we'll direct this over to the nearer boards. Thunder with an important face-off in the attacking ice. Again, just needing some sort of offensive swing in the worst kind of way. Seawolves with four goals so far in this first. It's weathered behind the cage. Now it's Joe Pace going airborne to the right point. Rattle away to Houston Wilson now. He's sandwiched between a pair of Seawolves. Wilson winning it right back at the goal line. Fed out in front. And the shot is rejected there by another Seawolves defenseman. Looks like of jersey numbers a bit different than anticipated. For Delaware, that's Jacob Wolf donning number 16, originally listed as number 67. And the play is blown dead once more. Looks like a high puck out there on the Seawolves bench. So we'll keep you notified if there are any other differences when it comes to the live score sheet. It's Chris Corgan going head-to-head -head against Lucas Helland in the face-off, and we'll have a redo. Helland seems to be a bit displeased as a result. So it's the Thunder with a quick attack on the Blake Wyrick, not able to haul it in. And now skied over the cage towards the near side end wall. Austin Weber galloping in. Back over on the half wing. And to the outside of the twine, this is Marvin Powell. Scored one of the recent goals for the Seawolves, and he's able to connect with Mason Cerrone. Michael Haskins takes a whack at it to the left point. On top of the left circle, Seawolves get the turn away. Not able to get a shot on that. A tough hit on the end wall. It appears that's Mason Cerrone. It's fought out of traffic there by Yanni Lirakos. And it's the Thunder with a little one-on-three action. And here's Russell with the easy turn away. 100 ticks of the clock remaining in this first period. Seawolves putting it all together up 4 to nothing. Jake Raleigh contested by Dimitri Daniluk. Raleigh able to win the scrap. Sent high. Raleigh back on the way down with a shot. And Trevor Martin able to kick it away off the right skate. At the four point, Yevdokimov with the wraparound. High slot shot. And Dimitri Daniluk taking the sacrifice there on the stop. Another rescue by Trevor Martin. And the Thunder defense taking it the rest of the way. Final minute of the first period has arrived. T.J. Delaney put to a standstill behind the net. A one-time drive out of play. Houston Wilson trying to go all or nothing there. And the Seawolves getting away without a mark. So it makes you wonder what the feeling is for Blake Wyrick right now. Well, it goes for the Seawolves as a whole. Uh, going into the locker room, you can never have that full sense of security, especially after the struggles they've had this season. It almost feels like you're always making up for lost time. So you really cannot afford to, you know, just rest at all. Down into the left circle, a quick breakaway, and they score again. And you know there's no rest for Yaroslav Yevdokimov. He does it again with his second of the night. And it's 5 to nothing Seawolves in the final minute of period number one. It was a quick breakout pass through center ice. And Yevdokimov showcasing the footwork where he gets one-on-one -on -one with Trevor Martin. And sometimes he just... Seems like he's undefeated every given situation there. 45 seconds left on the board. And we have the face-off going the way of the Seawolves. See Trevor Finch running up on Joseph Brennan on the near corner. Stripped away to Jeff Epright. Epright with the one touch to Michael Haskins and he's unable to keep it in. Relayed at the center line. 
And the Seawolves just keep surging on in here, trying to make every final second count. Rifled away, that's Trevor Martin with a backhand to the blue line. Michael Haskins lost it in transition. Through the middle logo, it's Matt Carranci with a two-on-two. -two. Carranci steps up to the high slot. Martin elbows it away. A little follow-up attempt, and it looks like that does it. For your first period of play after 20 minutes, your score, 5 to nothing. Seawolves up over the Delaware Thunder with an incredible showing in Harrington, Delaware. We will step aside and come back with your first intermission report here at the Seawolves front office as we recap all of the goals that we have seen, go through the out-of-town scoreboard and more. You're tuned in to the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. First intermission, a 5 to nothing Seawolves lead over the Delaware Thunder. And as we move on into the first intermission, let's have your first intermission interview. Tonight, it is Mason Cerrone talking about his season, moving around the FPHL and finding his place with the Seawolves. That right here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Again, Mason Cerrone, take it away. Hey Seawolves fans, Nick Rush here with your very own Mason Cerrone. Mason, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So you are a Detroit native. Uh, what was your background like in hockey? Did you go to many Red Wings games growing up? Yeah, a lot of Red Wings games. Uh, you know, living in Detroit, it's obviously a big, big, uh, it's, it's, hockey's just big there. A lot of, you know, every, every quarter mile there's an ice rink and then, uh, kind of a background. My dad was a professional hockey player for almost 30 years. Um, brought us all around the world, places like Italy, uh, Germany, um, obviously everywhere in the United States. So just kind of was born into it. And uh, it's just something I fell in love with at a really young age. But yeah, lots of hockey in Detroit, that's for sure. Now having a dad who played professionally for so long, uh, how beneficial was that for you growing up? Because you have that perspective that not yeah. many have at all. Huge, I mean, without him like none of this happens right like he was he was the guy that got me all my equipment got me you know training taught me everything I know uh obviously I didn't turn out as great as he was but <laughs> uh you know it, it was just huge I mean without him I wouldn't even be playing hockey I'm not sure what I would be doing because he just he made watching him play and and all that it made me fall in love with the game at such a young age so 
Now, the Seawolves do play the Motor City Rockers to end the regular season yeah. just outside the Detroit area. So is that one of those games you're looking forward to? You have it marked on the calendar? Yeah, I definitely have that one marked on the calendar. Uh, lots of friends and family um, to, in Detroit. I mean, it's where my heart is. It's, it's just somewhere where, uh, you know, I, I went in as a young boy and I left... Uh, Left a little younger as well, but it, uh, just so many memories, so many good times playing hockey there. And yeah, I'm hoping to bring in a lot of people to go watch that game. You played three years with the Omaha Junior Lancers before advancing to Midland in Nebraska for college hockey. Yep. Uh, do you have any connections or roots out there in the Midwest? Uh, not really. So my dad was actually hired um, when I was 15. He was hired to start the uh, program at Midland University. And so... I wanted to be a part of it. I liked what they were building. And then as for uh, Omaha Junior Lancers in, in Omaha, I mean, growing up in high school and, and wanting, you know, something a little bit less than AAA, but something a little bit, you know, better than house. And just right in there was AA uh, Omaha Junior Lancers. And it's a great program, uh, great for development, especially as a young man. Um, can't say enough good things about that program. And then, yeah, going to Midland, uh, had a lot of good memories there and was able to play with some great guys and um, meet some awesome people. So it's been a blessing, truly. Now, Midland and Omaha are about an hour away from each other, yes, from what I saw. Yep. So did that make for a pretty easy transition from one level to the next? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. Um, I think when you go to college, leaving the house finally and moving out, I mean, most guys will go to juniors. I didn't uh, decide to take that route, but... A lot of guys leaving juniors uh, or going into juniors, they leave the house. And so that was kind of something new was like not always having a fresh cooked meal at home, like when I got home. So it was a little tough. But um, as for the distance, it, it was for a reason. Um, I wanted to be close to family and stay around and make sure I was home to help out with anything. And uh, so the hour drive was great. I mean, any any time I needed to go home, it was it was right home. So I really enjoyed that. You're one of the newer guys on the Seawolves roster, uh, previously appearing with Columbus and Elmira this season. How have the guys with the Seawolves welcomed you in so far? Amazing. Uh, honestly, I'm truly uh, shocked because, especially coming from the, the Columbus team, I mean, that's a team not many people around here like. So uh, it was, you know, I expected it to be a little bit, you know, uh, awkward at first, but everyone was welcomed me in with open arms and, uh, you know, part of that is just trying, been trying to prove personally for me that I'm here to, to help and, you know, protect and, and help the team in any way. So the guys have been great. Uh, you know, I think multiple people can attest to that too. Since those like new guys have came in since I got here, guys like Kyle, guys like uh, Lindy, they can attest to how good this room really is. And, um, you know, obviously the beginning of the season wasn't what this team wanted, but when you show up, it's a new challenge and you're excited to face that. And, you're excited to get to meet the new guys and it's easy because you get traded you event you automatically have 20 new friends you know so it's it's an, it's been an easy move an easy transition and the guys have been just just great so would you say there are any differences in the way the sea wolves operate compared to any of the other teams here in the federal league uh you know it's it's tough because every team kind of has their own mojo, their own way to play the game. Um, you know, in Columbus, obviously, they're pretty skilled, and it, it, it's a lot of it moves around skill. Uh, Elmira, I, yeah, I mean, they they work hard, and then you know, as as for our team, we just we just want work people. That's that's our goal. I mean, we're not going to be the most skilled team on the ice every night, but we're going to work everyone, and and we're going to make sure that if they win, they're going to be limping out of the building with two points instead of. Uh, walking happily so um you know it's just bringing that that mentality of you know you might get by us but we're going to take a big chunk out of you and um you know and just hard work uh, the guys show up every day no no maintenance just right to work and and that's how it should be so all right mason thank you for joining me and best of luck thank you everyone that's mason cerrone here on sea wolves digital media so fans that was mason cerrone for your first intermission interview Back here for your first intermission report, we have a 5 to nothing Seawolves lead over the Delaware Thunder. So some sort of team record indeed for the productivity that they had. And let's go through all the goal scores that we have seen. Again, the Seawolves have just been spreading it across the roster. And we will 
start things up from the very beginning. 8.22 into the first period, we saw Yanni Liarakos with a shorthanded tally. The assist from Jake Raleigh and Kyle Russell. At the time, Raleigh had the puck in the attacking zone, dropped it back at the point for Liarakos. An absolute laser of a shot there. Over the left shoulder of the goaltender, Trevor Martin, as the Seawolves struck first. And then it didn't take too long either to add on to that. Yaroslav Yevdikimov with the second of the night. 12.49 into the game. Jake Raleigh added again with another assist. And Ethan Bush Anderson jumping on the honors. And then the three others, Jake Raleigh, Marvin Powell, and Yevdikimov again. So he has a multi-goal night. Jake Raleigh with a three-point first period with two helpers and one goal. And then <laughs> Lee Hirako is more of the same. One goal and one assist. So... Seawolves are rolling right now in Delaware. Saw a couple of penalties break out through the first period. We saw uh, Jesse Michelle right out of the box. Dropped the mitts with Justin Movali. And I'm sure with you know how short-lived that one was, Michelle going to try and find another scrap here tonight perhaps and uh, find a little bit of redemption uh, from that first period. I know that's a term we've used a couple of times through the course of this evening already. Again, we're here at the first intermission report. Seawolves up 5 to nothing over the Delaware Thunder. And let's move on in to your Federal Prospects Hockey League out-of-town scoreboard. Carolina Thunderbirds. How about this? They have played three consecutive games against the Columbus River Dragons. They won 8-7, to seven, or excuse me, 8-2 to two and 7-2 to two last week. And then Carolina tonight playing in Georgia. They have a 3-1 to one lead against the River Dragons. Moving on, the Watertown Wolves with the lone goal in their matchup against the Danbury Hattricks. 1-0 the score for the visiting Wolves. And then last but not least, we have the Elmira Mammoth with a bit of a hill to climb, trailing 3-1 to one at home against the Binghamton Black Bears. And Elmira played the Thunder four consecutive times, twice last week to the week before that. But, of course, a big advantage for that. Again, we have two teams out of the Northeastern region, out of the Empire Division nonetheless. So things like that you're definitely going to see. I know the Seawolves uh, saw a multitude of games against the Columbus River Dragons in order. I believe they had a four-game stretch against each other as well in the front half of the regular season. But thankfully, we're at this point, you know, midway through, and the Seawolves are starting to see teams that they have not seen before. And, of course, the Delaware Thunder being one of those. Last week, it was Danbury. Uh, they're going to get to play against them in Connecticut uh, within the coming weeks. And then a couple more to add on to that. The next Seawolves home game will be played against an unfamiliar opponent in the Motor City Rockers, that being Friday, February 10th, at 7.05 p.m., you can buy your tickets at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum box office or online at Ticketmaster.com. On we go with your first intermission report. Again, your score, the Seawolves 5, Thunder 0. And very quickly, we're going to run you through the total FPHL standings and how things are looking across the Empire and the Continental. Well, the River Dragons, again, with a... League best, 68 points. They are atop the Continental Division. And Port Huron right behind them with 56 points. So they're not too far behind. And how about the Prowlers? At one point, they were the fourth team in the Continental. And now here they are in that second place spot. And they very well could be knocking on the door to the driver's seat if the River Dragons are unable to uh, turn things around based off of last weekend and uh, trying to climb from behind tonight against Carolina. Uh, Carolina, third place with 51 points, 46 for the Motor City Rockers in the fourth place spot. And again, the Seawolves with 17. But you had a six-point weekend last week and an outstanding start tonight as they're up 5 to nothing after 20 minutes of play. So we'll see how the Seawolves... Uh, carry themselves from last week and moving into the near future. For the Empire Division, we have the Danbury Hattricks up top, 61 points. Just one game ahead of the Binghamton Black Bears. That is how close it is. Uh, Danbury with 21 points, Binghamton with 19. Uh, but you do also have to take into effect uh, the points you get from overtime. 
Watertown Wolves and the Elmira Mammoth. Listen to this. A third place tie for 29 points. A bit of a drop off there between Binghamton with 58 points and Watertown with 29. But uh, it seems like everyone's jockeying for a higher spot in one way or another in the Empire. And then Delaware, of course, uh, looking for their second win of the season. And with plenty of work to do tonight in this 5 to nothing deficit at the hands of the Mississippi Seawolves. We await the start of period number two at Center Ice Arena in Harrington, Delaware. Again, this game taking place at the Delaware State Fairground. A very interesting site to play. And we will move into the NHL out-of-town scoreboard after talking about some of the FPHL action. The Pittsburgh Penguins... Currently leading 2 to nothing against the Ottawa Senators. Just about midway through period number two. And then one other game. That's it. 9 o'clock start tonight, Central Time. The Vancouver Canucks playing host to the Colorado Avalanche. And we've seen that so many times during these weekend broadcasts. It seems like one night you just get two or three games in the NHL. And next night, it's a free-for-all, so to speak. And we have an 11.30 a.m. start, according to the chart tomorrow. Sabres playing the Ducks. And looking down, it dips off 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So we have a couple of earlier start times tomorrow in the NHL. 2 o'clock, that's Lightning versus Flames. You have the Florida Panthers with a game at FLA Live Arena on Sunrise against the Wild. So that's just a little look into tomorrow. Again, not a lot to evaluate tonight in the NHL, but tomorrow the intermission reports are sure to be something. So we will step aside again at the first intermission. Your score, 5 to nothing. Seawolves with a very compelling opening period in Delaware. More coming your way after this. You're tuned in to the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your sea wolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. We continue coverage of your first intermission report. This game going on in Delaware has been something for the Seawolves unit. They lead 5 to nothing against the Delaware Thunder. First meeting of the season between these two teams, and they will carry it into tomorrow night as well. A 6 o'clock start central time between these two teams. Be sure to catch that right here on the Seawolves broadcast network. So just a note, 6.30 start last night or tonight of course and then you have an earlier start tomorrow night so just something to keep a mental note of we have the video feed back in Delaware uh, one of the perks here of course of the remote broadcast you're always at a bit of a standstill never really can tell where exactly you're at when it comes to the intermission but we just had the feed come back through and let's flip you right to it a nice view of center ice arena on this Friday night 
And could you just imagine if this game were taking place at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, a five-goal opening period would definitely be something. Shots on goal actually fairly even, 14-12 to 12 Delaware leads in that column. But your Seawolves goal scorers, in order, Yanni Liorakos, Yaroslav Yevdikimov, Jake Raleigh, Marvin Powell, Yevdikimov again. The total of two goals tonight. Nothing like being on a hat trick watch after just 20 minutes of regulation. But players are gathered up around the neutral zone and we're ready for another frame of hockey. It'll be the Seawolves skating from right to left across your computer screen. See Blake Wyrick back there. Had to make a couple of nice saves through the first period. Again, Delaware with a total of 14 attempts. And one of his more notable stops came against Danila Malushkin. Uh, but the puck is down, and let's get right back to it. It's chased away by Joe Pace over there on the far circle. And it's traded up over at the center line. Right circle shot, and that lands shy off of the end wall. Another quick rush there by the Sea Wolves, and uh, that's Yevdokimov again. Almost had goal number three, not even 30 seconds into period number two. We have a little fray taking back down low in the Thunder zone. Denluck rifles it out to center. Now it's the Sea Wolves dropping back into their own zone. Center line, Daniluk skating straight over to the half boards. Over there on the right wing, it's T.J. Delaney. Pass moved a little too quickly for his liking. And he's able to locate it down there on the right corner. Now a dump out, nearly 200 feet, leads to an icing against the Seawolves. 58 seconds in the period number two. We've got a 5-0 game in favor of Mississippi. See Rasmus Asp out there for the Thunder. Finds himself on a two-game goal streak. Rasmus played 11 games in Sweden just earlier this season where he is from. So it's never easy to switch teams or levels midway through the season, let alone the location, especially when you're going from one nation to the other. But Asp has found himself right exactly in that situation as we have a face-off coming over, blocker side of Wyrick. It's carried out through the neutral zone by Yanni Lirakos. A little foot race to the Thunder back wall, and Asp is able to win that. It's wiped over to the left point. Got a two-on-two. Two. Right circle shot. Oh, and a flick of the wrist there. Glove save, Blake Wyrick. And again, Wyrick. Three consecutive games in net for the Santa Monica, California native. Both games played last week against Danbury. Uh, never easy when you're playing against a number one team in the Empire Division, but he was able to weather the storm. 3-2 to two in a shootout on Friday, 5-4 to four in regulation Saturday. And the Seawolves, they have that tradition where if the team wins, you just keep that same lineup compared to the last game. So that's exactly what they've been doing, keeping it as similar as they can. Of course, you're going to have some injuries along the way, maybe some guys that can't make a trip for one reason or another, but if you can handle it, you're going with the same exact routine. And that's the reason why Wyrick stays in net and how he has continued to thrive just moments into the second period. Seawolves up by five. It struggled with around that right side of the rink. Pushed out the neutral. That's Ethan Bush Anderson. Broken up in the crowd. Now two minutes into the period. Whisked away. Michael Haskins surveying down the rink. And he'll tap it up to the center line. It's given up behind Trevor Martin. And the Thunder. Back up to the blue line with Houston Wilson. Wilson bodied up by Jesse Michelle there. Again, the big man found himself a little scuffled tonight, dropping the gloves fresh out of the box against Justin Mulvalley. Now it's Wilson coming in on side towards the right circle. 
referee had to dodge out of the way of the puck. Big slap shot at the point, and that gets bounced away in traffic. Now it's fixed down the right side to Trevor Martin, the goaltender. And we do want to make sure that is Trevor Martin in net. Makar Sokolov, the backup netminder, and you know when a team gets into an early deficit, uh, the way they have, sometimes you will see that change in net, so we'll verify that in the coming moments as we have Austin Weber in on a rush with a shot, and that evades the cage. Stroked on out the neutral in front of the Seawolves bench. It's Wilson making way for Austin Weber to the near post, and Blake Wyrick kicks it out to the backside. Lirakos able to shimmy past Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk down low. It's Jake Raleigh again. Raleigh springs it to the high slot. Nobody home in that. Seawolves red, white, and blue. And the Thunder able to get a sigh of relief. Russell digging it out of his skates. He buries it down to right glass. You have Dikimov at the corner. This will ricochet Austin Weber of Delaware. Delaware out through center ice, tried again the two on two. Now it's Corgan having it fall apart. Yev Dikimov stick to stick with Liarakos. 15.50 to go in your first period of play. No goals so far here in the second period, but not to worry if you're on the Seawolves crew. They lead 5 0 in Harrington, Delaware, as we have who we assume to be Trevor Martin stopping the play. Stationed off to the left of the camera. Well, again, that would be Makar Sokolov, the backup goaltender for Delaware, if he were to get the call in. And right now, according to the score sheet, it looks like that's going to be the case. Indeed it is. Makar Sokolov, number 31, started the second period for the Thunder. Trevor Martin played the entirety of the opening period. We'll give you some info on Sokolov in the coming moments as it's the Thunder driving on in. Low slot. Chance fanned on by Wolf. Now it's Wyrick tucking it underneath the left arm, but it pops loose. Epright. Backhanded to the blue line, and it's dragged away by Danila Malushkin. Malushkin stuck up in traffic. And the Seawolves on the counter. It's Epright speeding down the right circle, and he'll curl it up towards that near post. Mississippi in the midst of a line change. Now 5-10 into the second period. A one-time drive attempt played a bit awkwardly by a Delaware player in front of Wyrick. Now another point blanker. That's Malushkin crashing in front of the net, and they score. Well, you have... Rasmus Asp out there in front. It looks like he's going to get the credit. And the Thunder have found their first of the night. It's 5-1. to one. Well, Malushkin came swerving in there towards the right side of the net. And Blake Wyrick's helmet seemed to have came off right afterwards. Even as the puck was fired into the net. One of those things where we'd really like to see a replay just to get the full rundown, but it's a goal which counts, and the Thunder dropped the deficit to four. A little bit of a stoppage here, and it makes you wonder if we're going to have a media timeout after the goal, something you usually do not see, but again, calling the game from a different state, you never really can predict what exactly the case scenario is. And additionally, of course, you have that little meeting out in front of the penalty box while Joe Pace talking things out with the referee. Perhaps it has something to do with that Blake Wyrick situation. Again, Malushkin came crashing in front of the net. And with the celebration led up front by Rasmus Asp of the Thunder, uh, we saw Blake Wyrick with the mask off. So it looks like it was just for clarification purpose there, that extended break in the play. Carancy takes the draw, and the Seawolves with another face-off win as it's discarded over there on the far boards. Carancy in motion once again. 
Midpoint for Helen. And it's dropped off out at center. Houston Wilson making a move in there. And Blake Wyrick collecting the loose puck, which will lead us to the break. So it's Asp with that opening goal on the Delaware column. But the good news for the Seawolves, they lead 5-1 to one in this road opener in Harrington, Delaware. More coming up on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. First Delaware goal of the night given to Rasmus Asp as we initially expected. Danila Malushkin on the assist at 521 of the second period. Getting back to play after the media timeout, the first one of the second period. And the Seawolves up 5-1 to one in this game from Center Ice Arena. Well, we knew Delaware was a team from the get-go that, you know, had a lot of learning curves. And a big reason for that is because... 15 of the 23 players on the Thunder roster are rookies. You recall at the start of the season, the Seawolves were in that same exact spot. You have the guys trying to build the chemistry, as you hear about so often. And then on top of that, they're going through the individual trial and error of being a first-year professional. There's a lot to learn, a lot to discover, both with your teammates and of yourself as we have Matt Currancy swooping around the penalty box wall, and the Thunder have it turned over. We have now played six minutes of your second period, and the Seawolves lead by four. It's Houston Wilson on side, pulls over to the left wing circle, and Blake Wyrick sticking out that glove hand for the save made. Rebound lands behind the cage, and I believe this may have been sent into that protective netting just over Wyrick's head. Kyle Russell coming into the game on the Seawolves line change. The defenseman registered two assists in his team debut this past Saturday, securing a spot as the third star of the game. And uh, the reason he finds himself in this spot is we have a very awkward face-off win for the Thunder, but Wyrick smothers that immediately. Before coming to the Seawolves, the 20-year-old out of Dallas, Texas, combined for 14 goals and 37 assists with the Vernal Oilers of the junior-level United States Premier Hockey League. So it's Tier 3 junior hockey. Just absolutely stood out from the get-go. And Kyle Russell, here with the Seawolves midseason. You know, a lot of players, they have that offseason where they're transitioning from one level to the next. And here, Russell doesn't really get that luxury, but he seems to be picking off very well, fitting right in as we have a scuffle back down on the near corner of the Thunder Ice. Sprayed on out the neutral to Russell. Russell tried driving it back across. Looks like on the other side was Connor Lind. Lind, another Seawolves newcomer, he came to the team on a trade two weeks ago to the Danbury Hattricks. An even-up opportunity for Mississippi over on the right corner. No room to work with for Jeff Epright. Epright tried dropping it back to Lind. Lind not able to get there in time, but Matt Currancy... Able to flip it off the right side of Makar Sokolov. The newly named goaltender for the Thunder, he came in right at the start of period number two. 
First 20 minutes had Trevor Martin in net for Delaware. 12.28 left in the second period. We're approaching the midway marker of this game. Seawolves up 5-1, trying to increase the lead there with a point shot. And Sokolov just able to catch a piece of it. Lucas Helen, left point. Rifling it behind the cage to Lirakos. Lirakos with some nice stick work there, but was ultimately dispossessed. Alex Susi going sky high. Michael Haskins with a catch off of the glove hand, and the puck barely stays in against the safety netting again. Very low-lying end boards at Center Ice Arena, so surprised we haven't seen some more out-of-play pucks up to this point. Now we see Danila Malushkin with an assist on that lone thunder goal, putting the afterburners on between the rings, and Lucas Helen outguns him, Helen. Post up at the right point. Shot gets ricocheted in front of the Seawolves bench. And it's Ethan Bush Anderson cut off. Now Ethan Bush Anderson coming back to play. He's had a very pesky lower body injury, which has kept him in and out of action. But over the past two weeks or so, decided to play it safe. And he spent his time behind the bench during games for the Seawolves. And you want to know what his record is while acting as a Seawolves coach. 3-0-0. Oh, oh. Maybe a bit of a good luck charm there for the Seawolves as a coach, but eventually, you know, players want to be on the ice, and good to see Bush Anderson back in prime form. Almost a breakaway pass there for the Seawolves. Could not be connected there with a man in the high slot. Bristled to the right point. Yev Dikimov trying to get back there in time. Trailer, high slot. That's waited on. Net was wide open, and... Let's take a look. Wyrick went sprawling out there to the right side. And if that did not go in, I have no clue how Wyrick did it again. Total robbery there in the blue crease. And you saw Ollie Venstrom there with total patience coming down the lane, passed it to a man right on the doorstep. He had the net at least halfway open. And Wyrick going east to west, and thus it remains a 5-1 Seawolves game. One of those saves, it's so good, you just don't realize if it's true or not. Mississippi unable to clear it. We go back down to the low slot. Pushed in between the rings. Now it's Yev Dikimov. Sending it high, and another one goes out of action. A little conversation going on in front of that Delaware bench. You have the Kimov gang into some of it, actually. As the officials assign the faceoff down on the near wing. There you have the wide view of Center Ice Arena in Harrington, Delaware. Built in 2002 on the Delaware State Fairgrounds. The Thunder have competed here since 2019 when they first formed. Salisbury University club hockey team also competes here during the season. So a lot going on. Of course, youth hockey. You have some college club action in there and pro hockey. This is a place which sees it all. And we have a penalty assessed to Yanni Liarako. So the Thunder... Off on their third power play attempt tonight. You recall there was a Liracco school, funny enough, in the first period, which was scored shorthanded. So, again, we'll see what the Seawolves can do down the man. Sometimes they make it look like it's an advantage on their end, as we have now played 10 minutes of period number two, and still a four goal lead going in favor of the Seawolves. It's untangled out of the scuffle. Karansi getting in the midst of it all. Now it's Dmitry Daniluk behind Makar Sokolov, the Thunder netminder who came in at the start of the second period. Back on the far circle, backhander tucked right into Sokolov's midsection, and he hangs on tight as we're just about midway through the Lirakos penalty, and we have another media timeout. Action continues in moments from Harrington.
Seawolves in the midst of a penalty kill. Now heading into the second half of regulation here tonight in Delaware, the hosting Thunder down 5-1 to one to the Seawolves. Liracos, exactly one minute to go in the box. Thunder 0 for 2 on the power play up to this point. As it's dashed into the enemy ice, that's Eric Oganezov working it to the right corner and propelled out to center ice all alone. This is Ollie Venstrom. And the whistle sounds out once again. We see a Delaware player. A bit disgruntled, that's Oganezov, and he's taking a step into the sin bin. So from the looks of it, we'll have a four-on-four -four style of play before a shortened Seawolves man advantage. A Seawolves power play unit, which really has not been able to get the reps in when it comes to actual in-game action. Seawolves power play, 15.2%. That's eighth in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Last Saturday, they were 0 for 1 on the man advantage against Danbury. So if anything, that's a testament to the hat tricks and the discipline that they have on the ice just in general. As Delaware immediately places the puck back down in the direction of Blake Wyrick. Malushkin fighting after it. And it's freed to the center logo. Just over on the far wing, Jeff Epright kicking it away from Houston Wilson. And the play has come to a halt once more. Now Matt Carancy saying something to a linesman, throwing up his hand in defense. So the penalty fiasco continues. A second man in there for the Seawolves as Matt Carancy will sit down. Accompanied by Lee Rocco's for the next couple of seconds. It puts Delaware back up a man. We will go four on three with a face-off to the near circle. So Houston Wilson scooping it up down low. And he'll relay it to the left point. So he will shoot it on in. Now, 13 seconds remaining for Lee Rocco's before he comes back in. And once that's all said and done, we'll go back to some more four on four. Over there on the near side of the blue line, Houston Wilson hooks with Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk shoots and they score. Thunder have scored back to back goals. And the Seawolves. What once was a five-goal lead now goes to three. We'll wait and see whether or not that was able to be scored before the Liaracos penalty ended. If so, that would be a power play strike for the Thunder. So you see Delaware starting to fight back a bit. Again, just a very odd feeling going into the first intermission. You're in the locker room and you're down by five goals and you're just focused on, you know, just the craziness of it all. The fact that you have 40 minutes left and what are you going to do with all that time? So the Thunder trying to crawl back on in as we approach the final eight minutes of the second period in Delaware. Yaroslav Yevdikimov. Trying to pedal on into the zone, but it's another offside call on the Seawolves. Wolves. our corporate salesman, Jared Campbell, spectating this game off to the left of the Seawolves bench. One of the guys who made the trip, getting some help in for the Seawolves on that long trip up and... You know, we like to give him a lot of shout-outs through the broadcast home or away, and we saw the perfect opportunity there as a shot is rocketed over the crossbar. Back on out to neutral with Houston Wilson. He'll wind it up for Danilo Malushkin. Malushkin again with one assist tonight for the Thunder as he will curl his way around the backboards. 
He's taking some healthy shoves from Michael Haskins right now. Another delayed call. And this is going to go against the Seawolves. Behind the net, finally the touch is made. And Delaware with another prime chance to just keep chipping away at the deficit. This time it's Michael Haskins doing the crime. So here in the second period, let's review what we've seen so far. Two goals, both coming from Thunder members. It was Rasmus Asp at the 521 mark. And in 11.45 in, we saw Dmitry Daniluk. So Malushkin, as we update the score, she actually had helpers on both of those. And he was the lone assistant between Asp and Daniluk. So two assists tonight for Malushkin. We'll get the draw going. Glove hand of Wyrick. Tap to the right point for Daniluk. Keeping it in for the moment, Lirakos proven to be a bit too strong. Lirakos side to side with Connor Lynn. They've got a chance. Shot goes off the end wall again. Oh, my. Seawolves made it look very good there for the time being. As we have the loose puck out at center ice, and Ollie Venstrom able to dust it off. Now it's freed at the half wing behind the net of Makar Sokolov. Now five on four for the next minute, 25 seconds for the Thunder. That final penalty on the board as of right now going to Michael Haskins. 628 remaining in your second period, and the Seawolves leading by three. You see a stick. Getting discarded off the near corner. That coming off the hands of a Seawolf. And they will fire it down the length of the way to Sokolov. So he freezes to puck to Rasmus Asp again with one goal tonight. After waiting a couple of moments, he'll stick it out to the left circle. On the near dasher, it's Malushkin. Taking a 360 around Sokolov. He'll lob it between the benches. Moritz on the receiving end. And it's three Seawolves back on their eyes up. Big, healthy slap shot. And that bounces off of the right wing corner once more to Sokolov. 25 seconds remaining in the box for Michael Haskins of the Seawolves. Now down to your last five and a half minutes on the board. Seawolves scored five goals in the opening 20 minutes. Nothing so far, however, in the second period. Delor somehow able to buckle down, and Sokolov looking good up to this rate, coming in right after the first intermission between the pipes. At the left point, now right circle, skipped off of the dasher to Eric Oganezov. Oganezov looking out for Weber. Now it's Weber going down the length of the four dasher. Behind the net, a little gathering there of four men total, and it's corralled as we get back to five on five. That is officially an icing on the Seawolves. One more break left here in the second period. We'll ride out the remainder of it after this. You're tuned in to the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. As you can see on the graphic fans, if you'd like to check out and purchase Sea Wolves licensed merchandise, one of your options, T-Shirt Fantastic, based out of Long Beach, not too far away from us 
as we call this game from the Seawolves front office in D'Iberville. But one of the options, if you're looking for a Seawolves t-shirt, of course, you can do more of the same at the front office in D'Iberville and also during home games at the Coliseum. But we're back to action after the final media timeout. Less than five minutes to go in the second period and your score from Delaware. Seawolves 5, Thunder 2, officially 438 left on the board as we have another Seawolves icing. We'll take it on down, Blake Wyrick's way. And so far, the Thunder have been able to beat him just towards that far side post both of the times. Again, with the goals between Asp and Daniluk. The Seawolves scores in order. Lirakos, Yevdokimov, Raleigh, Powell, and Yaroslav Yevdokimov again. Scoring the first and the last goal of the opening period. But since then, uh, the Seawolves have been cold in the attacking ice. Now we have a big stalemate on the near corner of Blake Wyrick. Finally taking a stab at through center. And Makar Sokolov comes way out in the left circle. And the puck went out of play on the clearance. And since the center ice arena... Everyone is so close to the ice, that camera looks like it was about to catch a piece of it for a second there. See Chris Corgan going up against Matt Currancy. Multiple men hitting the deck down there on the end boards of the Thunder Ice. Final four minutes of the second period are here. Five to two, Seawolves up. And we have another icing call. This time it will go against the Thunder. So we keep on moving here with the dump outs. At Bright, back on the ice for the Seawolves. Crancy on another draw. Carancy just one week ago in that Seawolves 3-2 win against the Danbury Hattrick scored the winning goal in the shootout. You know, Danbury was a city which is so familiar to him and vice versa because he played there for so many years in the Federal League with the old Danbury Whalers and also the Danbury Titans afterwards. So for him to go up against, you know, that Old Market, Danbury, Connecticut, that familiar market, I guess to better put it. And come out with a big time win for the Seawolves in the shootout. Uh, definitely poetic, to say the least. Pass goes errant around Makar Sokolov, and it's relayed to Lind. He drops it down to Currency. Currency back at the right circle. He's uncontested at the near side post, but the puck never comes his way. It was Jake Raleigh with it. Over there on the glass. Near circle again, trying to creep his way on in, but Joseph Brennan gives him the stick lift. Oh my goodness, look at Blake Wyrick out of nowhere. We just saw him sprawling out across center ice. And with no context, that'll make your heart skip a beat, but he was making his way back to the bench. <laughs> Wyrick still remaining out there at center ice. Uh, that was something to see. And again, what I'm seeing is exactly what you fans are seeing back at home. So I think Wyrick making a move on that puck at the red line was probably one of the last things you were anticipating there. But right now, the officials working things out. A penalty was called, and that was his reasoning for going back towards the Seawolves bench. Four men out there for the Thunder. Three out there for the Seawolves, but it's possible those two back men could be just outside of the camera frame. So we have a fourth man back there. 
Liracos getting ready for the faceoff. That is against Jacob Wolf. And Liracos, the winner this time around, is he'll stop at the right point. So it's officially four on four. We see a penalty over there on J.C. Moore. It's Thunder's side of the board. And then Trevor Finch for the Seawolves. As another Thunder player goes down for a moment, he's quickly back up to his feet. And again, that is Jacob Wolf taking off the helmet. Going back to the Thunder bench. So, of course, with the helmet off, he had to head off the ice anyway. A face-off coming up close for the Thunder goaltender Sokolov. Big drive from the right point. That skips left of the cage. Now 2.35 until the second period comes to an end. Up the gut. Russell, right circle, back out in front, shoots, and a save from Sokolov as he denied Russell on what could have been his first Seawolves goal. And Kyle Russell, you know, as a defenseman too, when you're in a situation like that where you're just one-on-one -on -one against a goaltender, you're not going to get too flashy with the stick work, but still another nice effort there. Shot goes right off of the post of Blake Wyrick, and the Seawolves get out scot-free to center. Yaroslav Yevdokimov, a man way out in front. That's Lear Rakos, and he cannot catch in. A little rebound goes off of the corner. And front for Malushkin. Under two minutes to go, you see a little bit of fatigue starting to kick in a bit. Seawolves is still looking for their first goal of the second period, even though they do lead 5-2 to two against the Thunder. Almost an odd man rush. Puck had too much friction behind it. And now it's pitched over at the left circle. Thunder with another chance. Save by Blake Wyrick as Houston Wilson got shut down. They're in the neutral zone. You have to come off with a breakaway. Backhander, and that won't go either. He almost had a hat trick there. It would have been his second one in as many games. And how he was able to get wide open that easily is beyond me right now, folks. Right point, they'll do it again. Right post for Karansi, and he ran out of room against Sokolov. Haskins at the blue line. He'll tread over to the near half wall. 52 seconds to go until the second intermission. Right corner. No one-timer for Mason Cerrone, although he was winding up for one. The Thunder chop it out to center. Tim Payne giving it a run to Cerrone. And Cerrone doubled up one man in front and the other behind. Chris Corgan eventually able to pry the puck loose through center. This is Austin Weber with a full head of steam. He fires one to Blake Wyrick, and another glove save is produced. So at this point, you have a very late face-off draw coming, and at this point, the Seawolves want to win it and head back into the dressing room with this 5-2 lead. Only two goals so far here in the middle stanza, both coming in the favor of Delaware. So it's located at the blue line. Joseph Brennan couldn't get anything moving. TJ Delaney on the back of the cage through center. Now it's Joseph Brennan. Losing in a sea of white jerseys. Now it's Carranzi. Man to the left side. They had one second left on the board, and Epright just couldn't do anything with it. After 40 minutes of play, your score in Harrington, Delaware. The Mississippi Sea Wolves 5 and the Delaware Thunder 2. So we go into your final break of the evening. Sea Wolves still up with multiple goals to spare, but. 
definitely can't get comfortable in a time like this. Delaware with a bit of momentum, back-to-back -back goals in the second period. And as we head into the intermission report, let's have another player interview. This time, it is Joe Shepard, Seawolves goaltender as a part of Seawolves Digital Media. Hey, Seawolves fans, Nick Rush here alongside your goaltender, Joe Shepard. Joe, thank you for joining me tonight. Yo, thanks for having me. You saw so many different stops through your junior hockey career, including Dallas, Cincinnati, and a couple spots through Canada. What was it like making a new home every year when you were at such a young age? Yeah, I think uh, it was a good experience for myself, uh, kind of seeing the world, seeing different places, living in different places, meeting new people. Uh, definitely there were adjustment periods everywhere, but uh, kind of got better as, that, as things went along. and. Yeah, I got to live in another country in Canada for a bit and I uh, really enjoyed it there and got to play at home there for a bit in Dallas and Cincinnati was a good experience too. So yeah, it, it was just, I definitely like my junior career, definitely had a taste of everything. You played collegiately at Bethel College from 2016 through 2020. Did it feel good to stay in one place like that for a couple years and almost knowing where you were going to be? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I enjoyed my time at Bethel. Uh, my freshman class was unique. All, all of us stayed there the entire time. And I think that talks about, you know, I think that shows how good the program is and guys want to be there and, and stay there. And it was really nice to get to spend four years in the same place and, and enjoy my time. Your first professional hockey game was two seasons ago with the old Danville Dashers in the FPHL. And I saw you didn't let in any goals that night for your first game. Were you the starting goaltender for that game? So, yeah, I... Went there after my season was done at Bethel. I finished up my degree and I had had an opportunity to play in Danville, so I did that. And the other goalie actually that night had a pretty bad injury to his leg, so I went in and stopped everything. I saw that night my first shot was a penalty shot, so I'll definitely not forget that one. But yeah, it was uh, kind of nice too. I didn't get in my own head or anything. I just went out there and played, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, we got shut down. I mean, it was just the way of the world at the time, and but definitely happy I got to get that one game in, and it was a, it's a good experience for sure. So doing it and coming in right in the middle of the game, a bit unexpected. The nerves had to be at an all-time high, didn't it? Yeah, it was a little, uh, a little bit nerve-wracking, but once I just got in the blue paint and I just thought about the puck, I wasn't too worried about, you know, coming into the game. I just tried to stop it, and luckily the pucks were hitting me that night, so it worked out. Now, a fun fact here on your Elite Prospects page online, it mentions that you have a cousin, Henry, who played in the National Football League in the 70s and early 80s. Uh, do you have any other relatives who are athletes? Um, so my dad, he was a big-time athlete. He uh, went to the Naval Academy for football. And yeah, my cousin, uh, he went to SMUs and uh, played for uh, the great teams there in Dallas and then went on to the NFL. So I kind of, a little bit of a football family, um, but... I mean, the genetics worked out. I ended up kind of kind of tall, and that kind of works out as a goalie. So all the guys in my family are, are a little on the bigger side, but uh, worked out as far as sports go. And, yeah, definitely a football family, but I played a little football here, but I definitely love hockey the most. So, yeah. So as we talk about, you know, the present in your last game, January 7th in Watertown, you made 41 saves in just your second appearance with the Seawolves. How would you feel out there? Um, yeah, I felt pretty good uh, just playing up there. I, I played in that barn, I mean, five or six times. So familiar setting for me. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't get the win, but uh, to make a, a couple saves uh, here and there and, and give the boys a chance uh, definitely was kind of a good to finish a, a start and uh, hole 60 and, yeah, try to win the game for the boys. And a three-man goaltender rotation, much like the Seawolves have, uh, do you feel a lot more pressure to succeed uh, in that three-man crew instead of the usual two? Um, I think as you get older as a goalie, you realize that when your teammates are also good goalies, that makes you better. Um, every day in practice, we're, we're talking about the game, we're, we're working on things. and So being a three-man rotation, I think we're all strong goalies, but we also have each other's backs. Uh, we all, all want the team to succeed and win games. So I, I wouldn't say there's more pressure. I think there's more uh, of a bond between the three of us and, and just trying to work hard. And whoever's in the cage that night, uh, trying to get the job done for the boys. 
the Seawolves are getting ready to play up in Delaware this weekend. Uh, what are some of your expectations uh, from the team and what needs to get done out there? Yeah, well, I'll say um, I definitely expect us to go up there and, and, and play hard and, and not use any excuses as far as being on the road or being at home. It doesn't matter uh, when you're out there, uh, you you got to play well and, and three points are on the line. Uh, playing against Delaware, I know that they always give you a tough game. They, they always keep coming. Uh, no matter the odd circumstances, they're, they're playing the full 60. So I'm definitely expecting uh, 120 minutes out of that team. And uh, definitely we're, we're going to have to play well to uh, get the result we want. All right, Joe, thank you for joining me and best of luck coming up here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Everyone, that's goaltender Joe Shepard on Seawolves Digital Media. That right there is Joe Shepard, the Seawolves goaltender. And here we are at the second intermission. Definitely a lot to unpack over the 40 minutes of gameplay so far. The Seawolves lead the Delaware Thunder 5-2 to two in Delaware, of course. Center Ice Arena, the location. And very quickly, we will get the score sheet ready to go and take you through all combined goals tonight. In the first period, it was 5 to nothing Mississippi, and it was Yanni Lirakos with the first in the night at 8.22, and from that point on, uh, the Seawolves poured it on a bit. You had Yaroslav Yevdokimov, Jake Raleigh, Marvin Powell, and Yevdokimov again. And in that second period, especially towards the final minutes, we saw Yaroslav with multiple opportunities at the hat trick. He had a wide open breakaway there. He could take all the time in the world that he wanted. But Makar Sokolov, uh, one of the goaltenders that came in relief in this game for the Thunder, entered at the start of period number two. And, you know, given the situation, he was lights out. Only two goals came in the second period, both in the Thunder column of the score sheet. It was Rasmus Asp at 521. And then Dimitri Daniluk at 11.45. So a couple of moments went by between the two. But Danila Malushkin coming up with assist on both of those. And the one assist only. So that is how things look. Blake Wyrick otherwise looking very good as well for the Seawolves. Shots on that 30-21. to 21, Delaware leads in that category. They had 14 shots in the first period. Followed up by 16 in the second. And then for the Seawolves, 12 shots in the first period, 9 in period number 2. So that's a little look at this game so far. Just looking through the penalty column, a fair share of infractions here in this series opener. Also the first game of the season between the Seawolves and the Thunder as well. So, you know, it's a bit of a cliche. You hear it every time there's the first matchup between two teams. But, you know, you really do have that feeling out process. And uh, the Seawolves, once they found that first goal, they were able to find a bit of a rhythm. Solve the starting goaltender Trevor Martin. And then, of course, Makar Sokolov came in, and he's been a bit of a roadblock through the second period. But through it all, the Seawolves still lead 5-2 to two here at the second intermission as we give you the call of the game from D'Iberville, Mississippi at the Seawolves front office. This game, of course, going on in Harrington, Delaware, and we're just counting down the time until we begin that third period up north. Now we go into the... FPHL out of town scoreboard. We take an updated look across the standings. Things a little bit closer in Columbus, Georgia. The River Dragons pulling things within one goal. It's four to three against the Carolina Thunderbirds. Again, after being swept in a pair of games against Carolina last week, River Dragons looking for some revenge and no better way to do that than right at home at the Columbus Civic Center. But Carolina with the edge. As of right now. Additionally, the Danbury Hattricks able to level things up, able to find their first of the night and make it a one to one game against the Watertown Wolves. And then it's a three to three deadlock in the matchup between the Binghamton Black Bears and the Elmira Mammoth. That game taking place in Elmira at First Arena. Now, Elmira and Binghamton. They have a distance of roughly one hour between each other, so definitely sounds convenient, especially if you've been keeping up with the Seawolves and some of those long distances they played against. You know, that Empire Division in the Northeast region, <laughs> definitely pretty tight-knit, you could say, 
uh, not nearly as grueling when it comes to you know that side of things, especially going into the midseason, going into the end of the season when uh, the mileage starts to kind of pile up a bit. So definitely something to think about now moving into the NHL side of things for the out-of-town scoreboard. Again, only two games going on. The Pittsburgh Penguins leading 4-1 to one against the Ottawa Senators with eight minutes remaining in that game from Pennsylvania. And then at 9 o'clock, it's the Avalanche versus the Canucks from Vancouver. And now we get down into this part of the second intermission report. This day in hockey history. And as always, we have a good one for you. It seems like we always bring up the same names week in and week out. But that's because some of the all-time greats have just played such a strong contribution in hockey history. So it only makes sense. And on January 20th, 1989, Mario Lemieux became the second player in NHL history to score 50 goals in fewer than 50 games. In his case, it was 44. He joined Wayne Gretzky, who's done it three times up to that point. But again, you remember at the time Lemieux and Gretzky, uh, two young guys back in the late 80s, and uh, really were the trailblazers at the time. You talk about uh, who the greatest players are in the NHL nowadays, and uh, you look back and you remember who it was, uh, the more we do the This Day in Hockey History segment. So again, we are just... Counting down the minutes leading up to the start of your third period of play. It is a 5-2 score. The Seawolves leading over the Delaware Thunder. Seawolves have scored all five of their goals in the opening 20 minutes. Delaware getting on the board in the second period, adding one more on to that as well. Blake Wyrick remaining in net as always. It's his third consecutive game, and uh, he has shown a lot of consistency dating back to one week ago when he played the opener, I guess you could say, of his three-game run. And if he wins tonight, you can only imagine he'll get that start again per Seawolves tradition in that series finale against the Thunder. Tomorrow night, keep in mind, it is a 6 o'clock p.m. start central time. We had 6.30 tonight. It will be 6 tomorrow, so be sure to put that on your calendar and join us for some more Seawolves hockey here on the Seawolves YouTube page. So we will take a break, and hopefully in moments, we'll take you right back into Center Ice Arena for the final 20 minutes of play. Seawolves leading by three on your home for Mississippi Seawolves hockey. Fourth pack is back, cause I'm master's trust. Guess who's 
see how the bad boys are wrestling. Testing competition, win the war, that's their mission. Not no mercy, see the race like the street. If you don't know, you better find out the war path. Here to prove a point, number one, just believe that you don't want to test it with them. I'll be here for Welcome back into your second intermission report. Seawolves leading 5-2 to two against the Thunder in Delaware. And we're at that point starting to just draw random blanks. But the Seawolves, again, scored five goals in the first period. Uh, Delaware able to kind of lean back into things. They went back-to-back -back with goals in the second period. Uh, Seawolves still with that three-goal lead with 20 minutes to spare. And again, we're just rounding things out, waiting for the feed to return up in Harrington, Delaware. But as a reminder, the next home game for the Seawolves, Friday, February 10th, 7.05 p.m., they'll be playing against the Motor City Rockers. That is the first meeting between the two teams. And you'll be able to see it right in Biloxi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Purchase your tickets at the Coliseum box office in person or at Ticketmaster.com online. And I, I think it's going to be a long time coming up to that point. Just about three weeks away until that next home game. So we definitely anticipate a big crowd welcoming back the Seawolves, so to speak. They're on the road next week playing against the Carolina Thunderbirds and then after that, they have a very unusual week with no games, something we talked about a bit on last weekend's broadcast. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how the Seawolves handle that side of things, you know, having a whole week away from action. And again, not having played a couple of home games in quite a bit up to that point. So be sure to come out February 10th again, 7.05, and you get to see a brand new team in action, Motor City and their first season in the FPHL, and the Seawolves are in that same boat as well. So you get to see the two expansion teams go at it there. A total of four games this season against Motor City. And it's very similar with a lot of these northern teams for the Seawolves. They will typically play a total of four games like the Delaware Thunder. Two games in Delaware this weekend, and then the Thunder will come down to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum in the near future to play another pair of games and round out that regular season schedule. Seawolves is trying to keep up the good times from last week. Two-game sweep against the Danbury Hattricks. Now they're playing the Delaware Thunder, trying to make it three games in a row. But keep in mind, we're here at the second intermission. Still 20 minutes of hockey to be played. And Delaware trying to grind their way a little closer on the board. 5-2, to two, they trail to the Seawolves. We get the video feed back up, so let's get you right back into Delaware. Seawolves will be moving from left to right across your computer screen once again. And for those just coming back in after the break, that second period just saw two goals, Rasmus Asp and Dmitry Daniluk. Seawolves, two goals from Yev Dikimov. You have a multi-point night for Jake Raleigh. Again, Raleigh, a big assist guy. He knows how to rack them up. Two helpers and one goal as well. And as we mentioned time and time again, that all coming within the first 20 minutes of action. Both sides jumping back on the bench and getting ready for this third and final period. As we are roughly two hours into this game at Center Ice Arena. Seawolves, as usual, on the road going in the white jerseys. Blue trim on the shoulders. Blue numbers and lettering on the back. Red pants, white socks, and white helmets. The Thunder and the black and white threads. The black jerseys. White trim, white numbers and lettering. Black pants, black socks, and black helmets. Keeping it simple enough as players move on back to center ice, and we're ready for your third and final period of your Friday. Matt Carancy going in there for the Sea Wolves, and Delaware able to sweep it away to the point, and Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk laces it over to Wolf. Wolf switches back across through center. This is Wolf to the low slot, kicked around by a pair of Sea Wolves. 
And at the end line, it's Wolf once more. Wilson tagging along in that thunder effort as it's drifted behind the cage. Joe Pace back into the action, and Daniluk unable to keep it across. Instead, he will trail it on back in front of the bench for the Thunder. Daniluk up on the far side, crossing the blue line. Down there at the sharp angle, he'll wrap it around, and no chance ends up coming to Blake Wyrick. Now 50 seconds into the third period. 5-2, to two, Seawolves lead, looking for their first goal since period number one. This is stashed up high and shot off the body of Lucas Helen. Played around the cage, back over on the hash marks. And the Seawolves, you know, really stacking things up in front of their man, Blake Wyrick. Some fancy stick work behind the net, but nothing really doing there for Danila Malushkin. Now it's J.C. Mortz being pickpocketed. Helen, right circle shot right into the gut of Makar Sokolov. And we have a whistle and a face-off on the way. We've seen a lot of Jacob Wolf, of course, for the Thunder. His lone goal of the season up to this point came on December 3rd in an Elmira Mammoth uniform, and the opponent at the time was none other than the Seawolves. Tonight is his fifth game representing the Thunder. So it's a familiar game, if you can recall, the beginning of December when the Seawolves made the trip up to First Arena. Now the Mammoth... The only team in the FPHL to not be paying a visit to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum this season. Just a matter of how the schedule shakes out. But back over on the far wing, this is sprawled over to the corner and stays in action for Brendan O'Reilly. O'Reilly at the point. A couple of bodies hitting the ice. That's Leo Rakos shaking down his man, TJ Delaney. And it is maneuvered on out the center ice. There's a sea wolf there. And it's wrapped around. That's Yevdikimov. Trying to go circle to circle there, but not able to get Yanni Lirakos back out in front. And those men, of course, after their success this past Saturday with one another on the feeder attempts, they've been trying to make a little rerun at it tonight, but you know Delaware remaining stubborn and the Seawolves just trying to figure things out in the offensive zone. Something they did well in the first period, but were just stalled in the second. But the Seawolves are up 5-2. to two. Shot goes shy. It's tucked back out in front by Yevdokimov. And we have a delayed penalty called. Looks like the net came off behind Sokolov as well. Well, the hand of the referee came up. So I'll have to count the men once again. We see five out there for the Thunder. And it looks like things are going to remain full strength for the individual sides. You know, sometimes you see that hand come up and, and you just think of one thing. A little one-on-two, Connor Lind getting handed over to the left circle. Now it's Kyle Russell. Trying to pry one ahead for Yevdokimov. Now to the kick plate. Karansi the first one there. Tags it up with a shot. And Connor Lind had the wrister rattled away to the wall. Over there on the far side. It's rim to Malushkin. Now Malushkin going downstairs. Through center ice it's Malushkin. Wide side pass to Venstrom. Venstrom not able to direct it on to Blake Wyrick as we have now played four minutes of your third period, and the Thunder down by three to the Seawolves. A little 360 around Wyrick. This is punched on. J.C. Moritz doing the honors, and the follow-up comes out the center. You see Rasmus Asp with the puck, wearing the C on his chest for Delaware. Ollie Venstrom couldn't keep it on the tape. 
and Liracos able to finesse it down on the corner before the play comes to an end. And we mentioned that the Thunder will eventually come down to the Coliseum for two Seawolves home games, to be exact. Those games, Friday, March 10th, and Saturday the 11th. Players a bit hesitant on the face-off, but the Thunder get to work immediately. Down there on the left half wall, it's T.J. Delaney. Going to battle with Learacos, 15-20 to go in the third period. As it's wedged across into the right circle, Michael Haskins pushing off his man, and the puck is all alone to the neutral ice. On the Delaware blue line, it's straight forward for Chris Corgan. Corgan flies it back up the right point. Eric Oganezov surveys for a moment, pulls the trigger, and Blake Weirich able to take it off that right leg. It's circuited to Oganezov again. The puck never finds Joseph Brennan waiting there, but Seawolves just a bit quicker. Now they'll kill some time just underneath the goal line. Peppered between the blue lines to Matt Currancy and Austin Weber. Trying to make a run in on him. The two number 19s. A little collision on the near corner. It's Lind at the blue line. Kept it across by a matter of inches. Now sweeps it rink wide. Swung behind the net by Ethan Bush Anderson. Now off the glove of Epright. Dimitri Daniluk harassing him down off of the end wall. And Epright forced off of his skates. It's the Thunder. Two men coming on in. Jacob Wolf strings it off the kick plate back over to Epright. Epright lost it in his skates. But Marvin Powell comes in to the rescue. Powell with one goal under his name so far tonight. And that back and forth, up and down style of play proceeds here in your third. It's dealt across for Daniluk. Dimitri Daniluk. Intercepted. That's Michael Haskins jumping in front 13-25 on the third period board. 5-2 Seawolves lead. It was 5 to nothing after the first, but the Thunder with a pair of strikes in the second. And we have a slow roller to Sokolov as he'll put the glove right over the top of it. So we'll step out for a one-minute break. And after this, play resumes from Harrington, Delaware. This is your home for Mississippi Sea Wolves hockey. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Sea Wolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. Seawolves trying to keep the crowd quiet in Harrington, Delaware. This game coming your way from Center Ice Arena. It's a capacity of 700, but the Thunder do traditionally go to 700, sometimes even a little more than that for the overflow. So as we mentioned earlier, it makes for a pretty good environment for the players and good for a change as well. Never know what type of sites you're going to see in the FPHL. Different markets, different arena sizes. It's good to have that variety sometimes as we'll move over to the Seawolves attacking zone with Jake Raleigh. Raleigh after back wall spins it to Learacos. 
And a return now over in the direction of Russell. Hacked away by Raleigh. Liracos again, just underneath the goal line. Near side point. Shrugged on out the center. Tag playing back and forth between Malushkin and another man down there at the right circle. Sputtering on back into the right wing. It's Rasmus Asp once more between the benches. He'll let it ring down the remainder of the ice. Four and icing against Delaware. 12-21 to go here in your third period. Your score to Mississippi Seawolves 5, Delaware Thunder 2. And one player we have not seen a whole lot of for the Thunder, Dennis Gafarov, who leads the Thunder with 17 goals, 12 assists, and 29 points. Gafarov spent the past five seasons between Russia and Kazakhstan. Lone Thunder streaking on out to neutral. It's Malushkin again with two assists tonight. He'll wind it to the low slot. Nothing but Seawolves defenders there, and it's Helen, the head man in, but not before icing is assessed on the Seawolves. And going into that first intermission with the 5 to nothing lead at the time for Mississippi, it definitely made you wonder what type of feeling that was. Again, the Seawolves with... You know, definitely a lot of leaps and bounds to work through. And, you know, they've had their struggles this season. But you go into a game with such a large margin. Something you may not be used to when you're looking at five goals or better in the first period. It's just a matter of keeping it down. And especially against a team you haven't seen before. You know, a Thunder team, you have no clue how it's going to look. When it comes to, you know, giving them just that ounce of confidence, some of these teams, they can run a mile with it. They've been keeping it a game, just a three-goal margin right now. It seems a lot closer compared to how the game started out, of course. Well, the face-off over there on the far circle, and... We continue to have things be a bit hesitant when it comes to the face-offs. Stick handled back out in front. We got that lone man crashing wide ride in the net. And the Seawolves will watch this go out to center. Eric Oganezov will lay it down the far boards into the right wing half wall. Powell at the center logo. Tried to get the trailer there and... T.J. Delaney hopped right in the way. Now it's Currancy backhanding in between the circles to Michael Haskins. Haskins back to Currancy. Currancy now lays it to Powell. Powell will rifle it towards the corner. Took a bounce off of Austin Weber for the Thunder, and they're able to get units to the neutral zone. Now it's trickled on back to the end line. A couple of more moments are able to tick off. Now approaching the midway mark of your third period. Spiraled right circle for Liracos. He fanned on the pass attempt. Trying for a one-time drive. You had Powell in front, but also you have Dikimov not too far behind either. 10.39 left in the game as a matter of fact. And the Seawolves trying to defend and extend their current 5-2 lead. Powell. Motioning it to Liarakos, and the puck slipped loose as he was trying to one-hand it there on the right side of the iron. Liarakos roughed up again at the left circle. And Brennan able to confiscate it to Jacob Wolf. Wolf has a pinball to the midline. Crancy at the left circle. Strides in on Austin Weber again. A battle of two number 19s there. You see things continue to get a bit chippy there. That time it was Austin Weber with some physicality on Tim Payne. Shot whiffed on as the Seawolves make their way into the attacking ice. And it's whipped on out to neutral. 
Looks like a two-on-two -two brewing here, but a third man jumps in at the last moment for the Seawolves. It trickles off of the corner boards and straight back to Houston Wilson. Yevdikimov at the penalty box boards. Now setting up his man to the right circle, back to Yevdikimov with a shot that came off a bit awkwardly, and Makar Sokolov able to just whiff it behind the cage. Jake Raleigh, as pesky as ever when that other team is handling the puck, he now heads off on a change for the Seawolves. Liorakos unwinding it now for Michael Haskins. Behind Sokolov. The puck is sprayed up the far glass on out the center. And Haskins trying to work out the communication with Lucas Helen there. It's Haskins rising it through neutral all the way to Sokolov and He'll elect to keep that puck alive, even with Lucas Helen speeding on in. It's Connor Lind trying to slap one through the traffic. Ends up getting a block. Rebound by Mason Cerrone, and Sokolov gobbles it up. And everyone heading back to the bench. It's another timeout in Delaware. More coming up on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hockey is back. The Mississippi Seawolves are ready to pounce at the Coliseum. Great seats still remain, starting as low as $10. It's the comeback of the pack. You won't want to miss it when Coach Joe Pace and the Seawolves take to the ice. Call 228-594-3700 or visit MississippiSeawolves.com for single game tickets. Plenty of multi-point games to go around for the Seawolves here. 5-2, to two, Mississippi up. Just about halfway through this third period as we await to get a view of the score clock. But those big scores tonight, Jake Raleigh with three points. Liorako says three as well. And then you have to come off with a two-point appearance, both of those being goals. A couple of really nice-looking breakaways as well in that second period, but the Seawolves were blanked in the middle 20. Now 8-13 left here in the game from Harrington, Delaware. And the Seawolves up by a margin of three. Almost a delayed offside against the Thunder, but Seawolves win it right back anyway. This is Kyle Russell. Going wide side for Cerrone. Now it's Cerrone cruising in against Brendan O'Reilly. Not able to withstand him. It's Lucas Helen dunking it in down the right wall. The puck goes right back to Sokolov. And he will take that to the glove hand for the save and the faceoff. I was once told a story, and it was actually by Joe Pace, the Seawolves coach. You hear about some arenas having square corners, and basically what that means is it's not that the corners aren't actually square, but sometimes you'll shoot one off of the corner boards, and it'll pop right back out towards that low slot in front of the goaltender. And whenever you end up in a rink like that, it's one of those things you can definitely play in your favor. It's just a matter of the situational awareness. Now down to your last seven minutes of the third period. And the unattended puck taken by Sokolov again.
Well, it was 5 to nothing going into the second period with a Seawolves lead, and Thunder able to cut into things a bit with conversions between Rasmus Asp and Dimitri Daniluk. Both of those ended up being even strength on the score sheet. Remember, the Rasmus goal came in the final seconds of a power play, and it looks like it just died down before the puck was buried. All goals tonight combined came on even strength, with the exception of that first one of the night from Yanni Lirakos. A short-handed strike set up by Jake Raleigh, who is traditionally a menace, I guess you could say, when the Seawolves are playing down a man. He scored three goals shorthanded, and that time he just gave it to Liriakos and said, it's all yours. Seawolves with a 200-footer down, and let's do the face-off again. So the first touch rolls over to Daniluk. Looks like Powell able to take the brunt of that attempt. Austin Weber down on the left corner. Thunder trying to rally it back out in front of the cage, but nothing reaching Blake Wyrick. Now the loose rubber all the way down to Sokolov's right. Let's get another icing in there. Rinse, wash, repeat. And some new men jumping on for Delaware. Trying to get another look at the FPHL out-of-town scoreboard. It remains a 4-3 Carolina lead over the Columbus River Dragons. Again, that was a pretty compelling matchup we knew going into the broadcast. Columbus falling on a bit of hardship against that same Carolina team last weekend. And, you know, now everyone's wondering, number one team in the league, how can they reply at home nonetheless against that Thunderbirds team ranking third in the Continental Division. Well, we'll check again during our post-game show. 6.23 to go, a shot, and they score. That one was a cannon from what seemed like a mile away, but it's all Lee Venstrom. Thunder with three consecutive goals, and it's a 5-3 game. We see Malushkin leading the charge back as well, so we'll wait on the official verification. But it started with a blast from the blue line, which Wyrick was not able to pick out of the air. So you see the Thunder with a bit of pushback, some resiliency, even if it's a bit scattered through the second and now the third period. Lobbed off the near boards behind Blake Wyrick. And you know, you hear it all the time. The difference between the two-goal game and the three-goal game can sometimes be astronomical, especially in crunch time like this. Still a bit of time for the Thunder with under six minutes to go now. Exactly six minutes as we get a view at the board. Brennan came riding out through center ice and we'll have another whistle. Just saw Kyle Russell skating alongside one of the officials. And it looks like another penalty is called against Mississippi. Indeed, it is Kyle Russell taking a seat. Delaware back to the power play. Right away, a bit of rough play as it's wired to the blue line for Weber. Weber knocks it behind the net. And over on the opposing side for Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk steps up at the point. Backhander on the right side to the net. And Wyrick able to squeeze the gaps. Second try. That one way outside. Shot. And that is somehow off of the iron. Austin Weber put it in. But the arms come out from the referee. And you could see him and his immediate reaction. Just 24 seconds into the Russell penalty. And the Thunder power play. 
So it remains five to three for the Seawolves. That puck going across the crease, but it being waved off again by that official right on the side of the net. So you know the final five minutes, 30 seconds, going to be a grind for these Seawolves. Once up five to nothing, now a five to three game. It's jostled with by Carancy. And Erasmus Asp able to turn it away up the right side. Now it's Daniel up Malushkin. Two assists tonight over there on the right circle. Taking his time. Now back again. Left circle a shot. A bullet there from Houston Wilson. And somehow Wyrick able to temporarily withstand the storm. And everyone stops again. So we are getting that official call on that third. Third Delaware goal. It has taken a couple of minutes, but that's just the kind of the night it's been on the remote broadcast side of things. It is Malushkin on the goal assist from J.C. Moritz at 13.37. So it's been Asp, Daniluk, and Malushkin for Delaware's three straight goals. Seawolves still up a pair. More coming up after this break. Seawolves and Thunder coming out of that final media timeout of the game. The attack continuing here on the Thunder power play with a Seawolves 5-3 advantage, but it's flipped one end to the other by Ethan Bush Anderson of the Seawolves, and the Thunder are back from square one. Knuckled up the right side, down off of the far end wall. And let's see if another penalty was called there. Indeed it was, and it looks like this is an upright penalty, making it a five on three for the Thunder. So the Seawolves are definitely not giving themselves any favors right now, and you know this is going to be quite the challenge uh, through the next four and a half minutes or so. 4.17 officially left, big one-time drive, belted into the breadbasket of Blake Wyrick. And Austin Weber just trying to park himself right in front of the crease. And we see a couple of Seawolves taking exception to that, especially Mike Haskins. So from what I believe is correct, this is the official media timeout. And we had a bench timeout come from one of the sides, and with the Thunder trailing by two goals and going up on a five-on-three, you can only imagine uh, that was called by their side and head coach Lou Santini. Again, the Thunder looking for their second win of the season and trying to do it against the Seawolves team, which has uh, come off of a red-hot weekend, sweeping the Danbury Hattricks with scores of 3-2 to two and 5-4. to four. The Seawolves played those games at home and only had a day or two to, you know, get back on the ice, recover, and then at the same time practice again before making the long trip up to Delaware. So this five-on-three power play continues for Delaware and... We'll get ready for the face-off over there on the far circle. We have one official working things out near the scores table area.
Play falls a part of it there for Rasmus Asp. And he'll drill it to the left circle. There it's Austin Weber again. Playing catch with Rasmus Asp. Asp behind the net. Punches it to the right point. Malushkin with the setup. A little quick scramble in front. Five on three goes to five on four. Still 48 seconds left to go in the box for Jeff Epright of the Seawolves. Now it's Sokolov. Able to dump it to neutral. A little entry into the zone. And I believe this is offside. Called on to Thunder. So the good news for the Seawolves is that biggest challenge is done, just surviving while being down on the five on three. Now they have half a minute left on the upright penalty as it's skated out to neutral by Eric Oganezov. 18 ticks left until the Seawolves are back to five on five. 3.20 to go in the game, and your score, five to three Seawolves under the Thunder. Over. The Thunder, as I make myself clear. It's Powell, able to split up a pair of defenders, but it gets turned away anyway. Now it's Oganezov. Over there on the far wall. Almost a two-on-one shot. They score! The Sea Wolves do it again. Just rounding things out on the PK. And we've got a hat trick for Yaroslav Yevdokimov. Six to three. You have to come off. A hat trick last Saturday. A hat trick tonight in Delaware. And what seemed like such a pesky task in the second period. And here in the third, he has finally done it. Well, no hats hitting the ice in Delaware tonight, but a big celebration nonetheless. And even here in the Seawolves front office as I am pelted by hats by fellow staff members. If only we had a camera on me for that one. Well, Thunder through center ice, and again, that very well may be the one to finish this, but still two and a half minutes to go. Seawolves up by three. So it's slapped on between the benches. A little high riser there for Liarakos. Wolf at the opposing blue line. And the puck just barely catches a piece of that protective netting in front of the stands near center ice. Well, of course, for the Seawolves, you know, these past couple of minutes have felt like an eternity. You know, you're down in a five-on-three. It's a game which is only a two-goal lead at the time, and then Yaroslav Yevdokimov does that, arguably his biggest goal of the night. And we now await the official credit on our live score sheet as we have a tapper in front of the cage, and Wyrick, man, oh, man, he remains brilliant sitting right on top of the buck jammed by Brendan O'Reilly now a buck 59 to go in the third Yevdokimov the assist from Connor Lind and Jeff Epright he was in the box moments ago re-enters the game and does so in a big big way And the Seawolves forwards, again, deserve a lot of recognition. Five goals in their last game this past Saturday. Putting up six up to this point. And we have a pair of Seawolves back in the enemy ice. This has moved in on Makar Sokolov, and he'll put the glove right over the top. Trevor Martin was the Thunder goaltender in the opening 20 minutes of the game. Sokolov entered at the start of the second and has carried Delaware the rest of the way through. And he has all in all had a pretty good night. That third goal from Yaroslav being his lone blemish on the score sheet. 
But it's Epright. Able to golf it behind the net to Carancy. Carancy plays it back out in front. Nice save there. Back over on the near end of the iron. It's Powell. He has one goal tonight as well. And the Thunder able to knuckle it to the midpoint, but not outside the zone. Wolf ends up getting pickpocketed. That's Connor Lind on the job. He'll leave it on back for Russell. See Wolves with a chance on. Man out in front. They score. They keep on coming. That might be Yevdokimov again. And if it is indeed, that's his fourth of the night, making it 7-3 to three Seawolves. So he just outdoes himself. You can see that puck being underhanded onto the Seawolves bench. A little bit of a souvenir for him. And he has, not sure if you could say single-handedly, lifted the Seawolves to where they are right now, but if not, that's pretty darn close. But he has broken that drought. The Seawolves went scoreless through the second period, and we are officially down to your final minute of the third period. 7-3 Seawolves up. Shot at the right point, goes into no man's land at the left circle. And finally, it's Cerrone fighting through the middle. Far side circle shot, and Sokolov knocks it down for the save. So the Sea Wolves will make it a three game win streak. And what a way to start the weekend in Delaware. You know, first time playing against a team, never easy. It's a bit different when you've played a couple of series against the same opponent. You get a good feel for uh, the guys you're playing against and the way the opposing team operates. But Mississippi with a test tonight, and they have certainly passed that as it's Lucas Helen playing deep in the zone of the Thunder. Near side half wall for Wolf. Belted on out to neutral. We have a Thunder two on two. Down the middle, a shot there. And Wyrick able to catch a piece of it with 20 seconds to go. Over there on the far wing. Thunder dropping back to Wolf. And they'll be able to get maybe one last rush off of this before the end of the night. Thunder out to center. It's tapped over on the right side point. And ladies and gentlemen... That is your hockey game. The Seawolves make it a three-game win streak. Two against the Danbury Hat Tricks last week, and they kick off this series with a big 7-3 win over the Delaware Thunder. You see the celebration out in front of Blake Wyrick. He has been in between the pipes for all three of the Seawolves' win in this streak. Three getting past him, but we saw some pretty good pressure from Delaware tonight, especially in that second period. A lot of fight coming out to a 5 to nothing deficit at the first intermission. And now we head on in. 5-21 and 3. The Seawolves came into tonight with a record. They now find win number six of the season. Thunder bounce down 125 and two, uh, leading us into tomorrow night's game, a six o'clock start central time. Again, we would like to remind you of that, as tonight was a 6.30 start, but six o'clock tonight or tomorrow, as uh, we round out this broadcast. Can be a little bit confusing. It's a bit different from the Coliseum, for sure, where you have a 7.05 start every game, regardless of the night. Well, again, fans, what a game. 7-3, to Seawolves able to pick up a big one against the Delaware Thunder tonight. And in that first period, in order, those Seawolves goals with that 5 to nothing lead, it was Yanni Lirakos, Yaroslav Yevdokimov, Jake Raleigh, Marvin Powell, and Yaroslav again with a second of the night. In that second period, we saw a pair of goals both from the Delaware side, 
Rasmus Asp and Dimitri Daniluk each capitalizing past Blake Wyrick. And things were a bit concerning in that third period for the Seawolves. Uh, we were looking at a score of 5-3 to three because the third period opened with a Malushkin goal. So at that point, he had two assists and one goal on the night. He was looking pretty hot for the Delaware Thunder when it comes to the offensive core. But at that point, it's 5-3. to three. The Seawolves found themselves on a 5-on-3 penalty kill. So at that point, you know, it was a bit eyebrow-raising how the Seawolves would be able to conduct themselves. But uh, they get out of that, go back to full strength. And the next thing you know, right as 5-on-5 proceeds, you have Dikimov nets his hat trick at 17.03 the third period. And he does it again for his fourth at 18.51. So, you know, when you think he couldn't get better with each game, this is a guy who continues to outdo himself. Uh, you have Dikimov that hat trick goal assisted by Connor Lind and Jeff Epright. And then the final one from Kyle Russell. So Russell, again, had his debut last Saturday against the Danbury Hattricks, had a pair of assists uh, to be named the third star of the game. And look at him tonight, another multi-point appearance. And this is a guy who, again, is coming out of junior hockey, tier three at the USPHL level. So just looking up and down the ranks, you have to come off with four points, just four straight goals. Jake Raleigh, three points. Leo Rocco's three. Epright, two. Russell, two. So Russell now in two games played has a total of four assists. And it's going to be exciting to see this crew up and down, what they're able to do on the roster tomorrow night for that 6 o'clock rematch central time. Before we head off of the broadcast, we'll take one last look across your FPHL out-of-town scoreboard. And all eyes, of course, on Carolina and Delaware right now. Score remains 4-3 to three Carolina. And you can only imagine that game starting at 7.30 Eastern time. They're getting ready to round things out. Danbury Hattrick's able to pull ahead to the Watertown Wolves 2-1. to one. Elmira Mammoth getting an edge on the Binghamton Black Bears 5-4 to four there. And besides that, that does it. Seawolves with a big-time win tonight. Your final score is 7-3. Seawolves win, and they make it three straight. We'll see if they can add on to that tomorrow night. But until then, this has been Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play of the action. Thank you for tuning in, and so long from the Mississippi Seawolves front office. It's a Seawolves win in Harrington, Delaware, and we'll see you tomorrow night for more Mississippi Seawolves hockey.